What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the finals edition of an episode of Boleros. Gab here with Maui. Say hi, Maui. Hello, hello. We're back. <laughs> yeah, just, just me and Maui today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yung nakablu pa rin tayo, yung kahit uh, na Sal versus UP. <laughs> Itinamis namin si Nejato, ah. it, just, it just happened. <laughs> yeah, marami lang ang blue shirts, just have to say this guys. I have a lot of blue shirts, obviously. I spent 21 years studying in <laughs> Ateneo. <laughs> so, Sam is not with us today. Uh, his daughter is, uh, is sick, so he has to take care of his daughter. So, uh, just be me and Maui today. Uh, after we're recording this right after the game ended between UP and La Salle, and UP demolished the De La Salle Green Archers 97 to 67, outclassed. La Salle was outclassed and I think unprepared for this game one. Uh, so we're not gonna do a typical recap, your thoughts on the game. We're gonna do one of our favorite segments, we're gonna do ballers. And boleros, we, we we haven't done it in in a while. It's been a few weeks since we've done this segment of ours. So uh, let's we're gonna try to avoid having all la sal boleros <laughs> for our boleros, but we're gonna try our hardest. Let's start first with our ballers. Maui, who's your first baller of today's game? Yeah. Uh... I think uh, I said this uh, it's a group chat natin nila Sammy. Uh, I think it has to be Hallard Alarcon. Uh, we've been calling out Hallard Alarcon the whole season. Apparently, naantay lang pala niya yung final. So, when the finals opened up, both him and Kagulangan decided it's time to play. No more you know, no more taking it easy. Uh, I think Alarcon top scored for UP. He really set the tone on both ends of 21. the 21. Yeah, with 21, 21 points. points. Uh, I think uh, not even yung scoring niya yung most impressive eh. Yung defense niya also on Kevin Kiambao kanina was, was just a masterclass. Uh, UP did a good job on both ends of the floor. Uh, I thought that si Alarcon really really set the tone. Uh, him in Kagulangan from the get-go uh, really set the tone. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, we've been waiting for Harold Alarcon the whole season. Uh, a lot of people have been calling him a bust uh, because of his strong preseason. And we open up with uh, Game 1 and UP demolishes La Salle. And well, it's Hallard Alarcon leading the show. Uh, he had, as Gab mentioned, 21 points. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think my first baller definitely, definitely has to be Alarcon. We've been calling him out the whole season and he balled out uh, today, definitely. Gab? Yeah, I have to agree, man. Harold was amazing. And you talk about the defense on KQ. It wasn't just him, no. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Raylan Torres. It was those two who were alternating on Kevin Kiambao. So kudos also to Raylan Torres. But yeah, Harold was amazing on both ends of the floor, attacking the basket, pull up jump shots, uh, pull up threes, catch and shoot threes. I think he had five points to, to start this game. Um, so that tells you all you need to know. I think that got him into the groove. It got his shot to go. It, it gave him confidence. And uh, I look for Harold to also have a uh, big game too. No, I think he has to take charge. I think he has to run more of the offense uh, like we saw a while ago. Um, all around great performance by Harold. And can't say anything. I mean... He the the last time he he had this high of a scoring game was against UST I think in the first round that Maui he scored 20, twenty one points I think yeah, also I think twenty plus oh. in game yeah. yeah yeah so that was the only time I think he had a big scoring game uh, others he had what ten points or 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 even less no he hasn't had those big scoring outputs like we expected him to have but you saw the potential no uh, Maui in the preseason. Harold was running a lot of the offense. He he was sometimes the point guard for this team. He he was the guy taking charge of the offense. And for majority of the season, you you did not see that with 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 Harold, but now you did. And uh, I sure hope that they run more offense through him. I mean, I like his game. I like his uh, 
composure when 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 running of the offense. Sila ni JD actually are very composed when running the offense. So yeah. Uh, ginanahan, na, yung... ginanahan na nakikita ginanahan si Migs Oxon eh. Si Migs Oxon naka KBL na. It's time to to step up and uh try out to get into the big leagues. <laughs> I'm sure there are scouts watching. I'm sure there are yeah. scouts watching. And that was a good tryout. That was a good show for Harold if ever he wants to get that bag. All right, my baller of the game. I know we kind of underappreciate him here in this podcast because you know, his team is kind of expected to win and are the title favorites since day one. But Coach Gold, uh, Coach Gold did a masterful job in this game, getting his team ready for game one. Uh, obviously, from the game, Lasal looked like they were shocked. <laughs> It's like they weren't prepared for this game. But UP was. UP was very prepared. They had the strict game plan to pressure the ball, uh, force you, force LaSalle into turnovers, and that's exactly what they did. LaSalle was flustered, man. They could not, they had no answer for UP's, for, for UP's defense, and they were rushing it for most of the time. This was the LaSalle of Balik round one. <laughs> yeah, this was the LaSalle of round one, rushing the offense, uh, making rushed, rushed decisions, not composed at all. And I don't know, no? you, we were talking, Maui, no start in the game. Uh, why is UP running with LaSalle? This is how LaSalle loves to play. Or maybe sa utak ni Coach Gold, uh, parang, let's... Let's yung let's run para Lasal will run too and they will de- devolve back to the round one Lasal. So baka yun yung meta thinking ni Coach Gold, no? Uh, let's play the Lasal way so that Lasal will play their game and incidentally not slow down the game and devolve back into their uh pagkakalat ways yung in the first round. And this was and this was exactly it. So yeah, Coach Gold man, uh Kudos to you in yung nagpakalbuaho today para sa yo. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> what a mar- masterclass <laughs> no? by by UP. Yeah. I think yung first half pa lang really showed. They forced I think 11 turnovers and scored 17 from them. Uh with Lasal only scoring two despite that uh en- energetic and fast-paced game nung nung first half. So yeah, I, I agree Gab, uh, definitely. I think si Coach Gold really prepared yung yung UP. They showed their championship composure. I think that's the thing that really lacked the Lasal uh, kanina. Uh, let's get into yung next. Uh, are we going boleros or her ballers all the way first? Mm, sige, yung, let's go with one set of ballers and boleros. So let's go with boleros first, Maui. Who is your first bolero of the of this game one? It has to be Lasal, bro. Getting blown <laughs> out by 30 <laughs> points. I mean, the way... We haven't seen a finals like this. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, our subscribers. I don't think I've seen a finals this one-sided uh, in recent memory or even in the two, two, 2000s, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the 5 feet, five feet Ateneo had a, a, a game, but not 30 points, uh, not like this. Uh, I think it really showed you lack of composure. Nila. We were, the whole second round, we were talking about, we were praising them with the how... They've, they've evolved the whole season. Uh, they they were a steady and composed team despite them playing pa rin yung fast-paced basketball. And I think kanina really showed yung lack of composure nila. Uh, they had so many turnovers. Si Policarpio, I think, played only five minutes nung first half. He had three ter- quick turnovers. Si Mark Nonoy, uh, I saw this online on social media and... He was just he, he went back to Mark Nonoy first round or Mark Nonoy season 85. He just kept on rushing those three point shots, not looking to drive. Uh and it's crazy. I mean, did LaSalle really deserve to get to the finals if they're gonna play like this? Diba? So we have to really call them out as a boleros. And to and to think of it, they had the huge celebration to celebrate the championship rings, diba? from <laughs> From the 2000s and uh, I think in 2017, nila grab if I'm not and mistaken, brought them out at halftime. Brought them diba? out. They, they brought, yeah, they brought out sila Mark Cardona. I mean, sila Renan Netwalo. These guys are legends. 
these guys these guys are part of those lasal teams that dynasty dynasty from the early 2000s it's embarrassing what happened then today uh i'm not sure uh, i was talking to to one of my friends na lasal ganina um the real question is will they be able to bounce back uh they they, they never turned the corner even in the fourth quarter uh they're going into game game two blindsided with a 30 point loss during game one uh i think we all all of us all of the basketball fans uh maybe not some up maybe all of us basketball fans even the up fans i'm sure wish for a tight uh and exciting finals and it's crazy that they just blew out out of the water lasal today any thoughts gab yeah, okay. So, I'm not gonna go with Lasal. That's kind of cheating, Maui. Because they lost the game. So, obviously, they're, you know, they're boleros. But, uh, by 30! Yeah, my... By 30! Yeah. Yeah, we have to call them out. It's crazy. Maui, ballers and boleros tayo. Maubusan tayo ng boleros kung ikong inay mo yung buong Lasal team as bolero. Ay, nako. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, okay. My first bolero was actually, you mentioned him, was Janel Policarpio. He looked horrible like what the fuck bro he looked like he wasn't ready for the moment at all like uh, nothing and there was this du- he had this really dumb turnover where he picked up the ball he actually he hadn't even crossed half court yet he picked up the ball and he was looking for an outlet pass and no one was there because they were expecting him to bring the ball up like what the f- bro you, you weren't doing this the past few games. What the hell, man? You were confidently you bringing up the ball. You were setting up the offense. The whole second round, you were doing this. Why now are you so tentative? Man, Janet Policarpio did, did not look like he was ready at all. He looked like a rookie. Talaga. I mean, kung ano yung, kung whatever you imagine a, a rookie to play like, in a big game in the finals of the UAP. Junel Polycarp, you played exactly like that. I thought the whole that that five minute stretch he had in the first half, I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? The first quarter, Maui, I think LaSalle tied the game at 24 or cut the lead down to two. 26 to 24. And Junel Polycarp, you like gave them what? Uh, five, six points? <laughs> Gave them easy, easy baskets. baskets. Yeah. Like oh, what? I think ito yung ito yung, yung reason gabi eh, no bait siya na the doghouse nung early part of the season. Diba? Yeah, he just m- made some really boneheaded play. So, yeah, he's my other he's he's my first bolero of this game. Just wasn't ready for the moment at all. Wasn't ready. I mean, if Coach Topex was forced to play Wahi Manuel over him. Uh, you you know you're doing Alam something na. wrong. <laughs> Alam mo na. Alam mo na, di ba? Championship game. Okay. Yup. All right. Uh, let's go to another round of Ballers and Ballers. Let's start again with Ballers. Maui, who's, yeah. uh, who's a Baller? Sige, since we were very, you know, very critical of Lasal, very critical of me, in particular, I mentioned a few players and Sigab doubled down on Junel Policarpio. I have to name a baller. I mean, this is a 30-point loss, but this guy played his art out. He looked for every mismatch. I think he took advantage of all the mismatches kanina. Drew, drew a lot of fouls. I think he really kept them in the game during the first half. See, Mike Phillips. Uh, we have to give credit to Mike Phillips. He really balled out today. He matched up pretty well with, with Malik Diouf. Uh, Malik Diouf was in foul trouble because of him. This guy we picked up so many fouls. Nung draw, drew, sorry, drew so many fouls nung first half because he was a walking mismatch. I think nobody, nobody from UP was able to match up with him with his energy nung first half. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think si Mike Phillips deserves a call out. Uh, if Lasal is to contend uh, during game two, this Mike Phillips has to to go back. Uh, I think if this Mike Phillips continues to play like this and the other guys continue to step up, then maybe. Maybe, I don't know, but I'm not that optimistic after today. But maybe Lasal can have a fighting chance during the second game. So yeah, uh, I think Gab, you would agree that Mike Phillips is the only bright spot from Lasal a while ago. Yeah, I mean, from the way they played, actually, Maui, no first quarter, palang, si Mike Phillips was the one who was keeping them in the game. Just by attacking the basket, 
just attacking every big man who was put on him, uh, cooking them. Just, <laughs> yeah. just cooking them alive. Yes, he was feasting down low. Feasting, yeah. uh, not even Malik. That spin move and dunk over Malik Duf. Wow. Just, grabbing iron, grabbing iron. <laughs> you don't see that in the UAAP. Spin move to a, to a two-handed dunk. So, yeah, if there was any bright spot for LaSalle and there were barely any, um, Mike Phillips was definitely one. So, I'll go with another... Baller of the day. Um, well, he did play really well today. I, I actually can pick any one of the UP <laughs> players, but Sean Turkulas. Yep. Aldo Turkulas. I, uh, I thought Pare, his energy. That putback dunk was crazy. Yeah, he had his own highlight, man. Amazing, amazing. He had what? How, how, how many dunks did he have? I think he had three or four. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Two or. Yeah, yeah, Arnold, he, he, he got a dunk now already. Yep. And uh, I thought he was he looked confident. He looked energized. And definitely outplayed any of the defenders that LaSalle put on him. Even KQ. Uh, they, they were happy to sag off him from three-point range. And he confidently shot, I think, one or two in. Uh, his... His 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 rebounding was really big, especially with Malik Juf with in foul trouble for majority of this game. So uh Aldous Turkulas, man. Uh I think he solidified himself as the backup to Francis Lopez. Uh if Francis Lopez uh leaves, chooses to go pro, I think he he's the lot to to be the main starting power forward. I mean he 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 starts for some games in it in the elimination round but you know it's just a placeholder uh it's, it's mostly just to give lebron lopez you know a new look against you probably backups from the other team but yeah uh, i'm i was really impressed by aldus uh, turkulas uh let's hope we see that kind of aldus uh, turkulas in game 2 cuz they will need him Honestly, uh, yeah. we've talked about how thin the front line is for UP and Aldous Turkulos was able to hold his own and stay on the floor. So that's a big thing. Maui? I think part of the no? X-Factors that we pick, uh, I think one of the main X-Factors we mentioned yeah. for UP is for their front court to really match up the front court ng Lasal. Uh, despite Mike Phillips having a very good game. I think nobody else from Lasal front court uh, did well kanina. But UP had a couple of players that really shined. Uh, are we going with uh, boleros or ballers first? Now, let's go with another round of boleros, Maui. Boleros. Uh, who's another bolero for you? Yeah, I think I have to call out uh, Evan Nelly as a bolero for today. Uh Right off the bat, uh, you saw him really pressured by, by J.D. Kagulangan. I thought that he did not have that composure needed for Lasal to really go head-to-head with UP. Uh, for Lasal to even have a chance to fight UP, KQ and Evanelli has to show the way and yung, yung steadiness and composure. They have to show it. Uh, I think that we've been humming this during the whole second round that both of these guys have really adjusted and matured the whole second round. Uh, but uh, they resorted into their, in, into their old ways. Uh, I saw Evanelli forcing shots up. Uh, there were a lot of LaSalle possessions that were just dribbling and, and shooting. No, no, no. They weren't uh, really sharing the ball, moving the ball around. Uh, I think that he was pressured because they got into a big goal in third quarter, especially when he was sitting down. Um, Unfortunately, he also picked up two quick fouls in the first half. So coach, he had Coach Topex was forced to to bench him, um, and this really led to to a good second quarter and a good opening third quarter by Lasal. But uh, even when he entered, uh, I didn't see the composure niya talaga. That that was very prevalent in the second round ng, ng season. Uh, it's very sad. Uh, I think Gab, we've been saying this uh, the whole second round. We didn't see Nelly and and Kiambao rushing. They, kanina, they look, like, they look like they were rushing everything. Kahit sa takbo pa lang ni Kiambao and ni Nelly, kita mo na that 
they were really in a hurry. Um, it was really a bad game for Lasal, and for them to even have a chance, uh, definitely Kevin Kiambao and Evan Nelly has to show out. Uh, I think one of the main things that they have to do is to really look for ways to to get Kevin Kevin Kiambao involved, and they they, they really did the poor job. Kanina, they weren't able to to find counters. They weren't able to find um. To really adjust with the way that UP was defending Kevin Tiamba a while ago. Uh, and I think that Evan Nelly has to get a blame since he's the really the floor general of Lasal. Any thoughts, Gab? Well, Maui, you pointed out KQ, but and he's my bolero, the an, a, another bolero for this game. Listen, man, KQ, as much as you, your game has evolved. On the perimeter, and you and and you can play on the perimeter. You gotta punish UP if they're gonna put Alarcon or Torres on you. You gotta get inside, man. You can't just go uh, face up, dribble from the perimeter with Alarcon and Torres defending you. They have the upper hand there. They're used to playing perimeter defense. They're excellent pip yung perimeter defenders. I thought yung there. There was one play in the first quarter where he did post up yeah, we Harold. Posted up and again, no. Oh, and he and he got a bank shot to go. I thought, yeah, hey, if they're gonna put Harold or Raylan Torres on you, take it inside, man. You're 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 way bigger and you have experience in the post. You can definitely uh take advantage of that mismatch, but he didn't. He was uh, very much um, content to take it from the outside and launch three pointers, and uh, you know, uh, like what uh, Char Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal say and in, on Inside the NBA, get your ass in the paint, bro. I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah, you're with if they're putting perimeter defenders on you, smaller players on you. It's a bailout if you just launch threes and launch jump shots or just attack from the perimeter. You gotta attack from the inside. I look for Coach Topex to adjust. Hopefully, he adjusts in in game two and run more plays to get Kekyambao the ball inside the paint. Because they because they obviously have a lot of success inside the paint. Uh, Mike Phillips showed it a while ago. They're very vulnerable inside the paint. And they could draw fouls from Malik Diouf. But they were content to just attack from the perimeter, which is, I, I don't think is the way to go. They have a size advantage and they, they for the most part, no one utilized it aside from Mike Phillips. So, KQ, you, ha you have to be better, man. You're the MVP. You, you did not play like the MVP. So, you gotta be better. If, if you want to win game two, that MVP, KQ, has to show and has to make an appearance in in game two. You can't be like that. You 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 can't bail out U, UP's defense by launching threes and attacking from the perimeter. It's not the way to go. You have to get your ass in the paint. Uh, okay. Agree. Agree. <laughs> okay, so last round. Uh, last round of ballers and boleros, Maui. Who is a baller you want to point out? Yeah, uh, I think we have to call out uh see si francis lopez uh, i'm calling him francis because we got called out the previous time uh for calling him lebron it's uh, all right it's all yeah, right yeah. So francis lebron lopez <laughs> uh we have to give him credit uh i think he really led you charge nung, especially in the third quarter he did a good job opening your quarter by really just being aggressive uh hitting also a couple of three-point shots was a welcome sight uh you lasal couldn't sag anymore because i think he hit two three-point shots nung, one no first half and then another no, no second early second half. Uh, he really did a good job attacking the paint. Uh, you can really see yung, yung maturity ng, ng game ni, ni Francis Lopez. And uh, it's something that I something that I've really welcomed uh, this season. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not here next season, but I think it would be beneficial to him if he stays for another year to develop more yung yung playmaking niya. Uh, what I've been really impressed this season is in decision making now when driving the paint. He rarely forces his way to the paint. He he instinctively passes uh, when he gets into trouble, uh, when he gets doubled, or when the coverage is very good when he drives the paint. And 
again, yung rebounding and just yung aggressiveness on defense also. Uh, I think both him and Turkulas really demolished yung front line ng Lasal. Uh, they really did a good job. Uh, Raven Cortez was unplayable because these guys were were really good. Uh, they hit three-point shots. Even Tibel Monte was able to hit a perimeter shot. Um, but yeah, uh, I think really yung, yung aggressiveness to grab boards, aggressiveness to to drive the paint, uh, to dunk it. Uh, he almost had a very... He almost had a highlight reel also a while ago trying to poster Mike Phillips. And for and if, if a LeBron Lopez like this shows every game, if a Shunter Kulas like this shows every game, then it's gonna spell trouble for any opponent in the UAP. These guys are just too tall, too strong, and too fast, and too athletic for any of those power forwards to match up. Um, if these two guys are this consistent, then it's gonna spell trouble for LaSalle definitely come game two. Uh, so yeah, any thoughts, Gab? Actually, Maui, I am gonna cheat because <laughs> wala na ako ma name na, na, na ibang baller, but I am gonna name uh, Bolero. Uh, one Bolero, man, is going under screens. I don't know why uh, that was the pick and roll coverage that Coach Topex chose to run against UP because they consistently went under screens. And it led to a lot of breakdowns and a lot of rushed closeouts from the LaSalle guards. Uh, I, I don't think that's the way to play uh, UP, you know, by going under screens. They went under screens and dribble handoffs over and over again. And UP made them pay. Uh, they hit a ton of threes. And when they didn't hit threes, they were driving the paint because, you know, the guards had to rush out because they were going under screens. Ako, they have to adjust. Co one of the adjustments also that Coach Topic has to do, I think they have to switch the pick and roll. Either switch or blitz agree, or agree. show. Agree. They, they, they cannot go under screens against this UP team. All, Especially their guards. Their guards you know, all have, have the guard. capability. Yep. Yeah. Their guards all have the capability to shoot from three. They can't go under. And... If you're willing to go under, you should live with threes. You can't rush, rush to contest and then get beaten by you by penetration. Diba? So what's the point of going under screens? Kung ganon, diba? It's just a it's just a weird decision for me by Coach Topex and you and the coaching staff as to how they would play your dribble handoffs and pick and roll by going under. So uh that was really weird for me. Last round, Maui. Last round of boleros. Uh, I'll go first. I, I didn't name an, another bowler, but I do have another bolero. And just to <laughs> avoid this naming puro Lasal players as bolero, uh, maybe this is, this is quite a reach. I, I don't think so. Uh, one bolero from UP has to be Sean Alter. And, he, and here's why. He was the backup to start the season to Malik Duf. And I think he has definitely lost his spot in the rotation to, to Luis Pablo. And his, and his game earlier uh, was not in his favor at all. Did, did not show any potential, whatever. He, again, he, Mike Phillips ate everyone alive. He ate Sean Alter alive. And I don't think Sean, uh, Sean Alter made good account of himself in the few minutes that he played. Uh, Luis Pablo, I think, made better account of himself. Despite some silly fouls er early on, he did have a ton of activity against Mike Phillips. Uh, had, you had some good offensive rebounds, uh, battled for those defensive rebounds as well. Uh, yeah, so if there's any bolero on the side of UP, despite their drubbing of LaSalle, it has to be Sean Alter. Uh, from backup center to now third string center, clearly the third string center now, uh, Sean Alter has to be my, one of my boleros. Maui, last bolero before we go. Yeah, uh, I think we've mentioned generally the whole LaSalle team as a bolero. So I'll give out a, bol a baller na lang, Gap, uh, for LaSalle. Uh, I thought that's no, so it. Nandaya ka din. <laughs> nandaya rin ako, nandaya rin ako. Baka si Bidila, we're, we're too negative on LaSalle, but 
it's warranted. They just lost a 30 point game in the finals. But but I have to give credit to EJ Golena. Uh, I think this guy really showed yung yung energy. He was trying to to get the spirits of Lasal nung end game. I thought that Lasal could have played better nung fourth quarter. Uh, they should have played better to get momentum uh, for 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 game two. This guy just played nung 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 dulo. He was diving for loose balls uh, that getting to the basket. Uh, I think he and, uh, and Abadam in limited minutes really really tried to to rally Lasal. If Lasal is if if Lasal is able to to contend sa game two, then they will have to forget what happened in game one. And these two guys showed that they'll just give it all out and just give their effort. Uh, I think they have to the other Lasal players will just have to follow their lead and forget game one and get ready for game two. Uh, it's We'll see. We'll see if we see another blowout. Hopefully not. Uh, I'm hoping for for a tight game too, whether it's UP closing out or Lasal getting another chance. But uh, our hope is, as always, as basketball fans, to get a close and clean game and uh, hopefully another game. But for me, it's looking very grim for Lasal after the showing a while ago. Uh, this UP team, as we've mentioned, uh, have been uh, the clear favorites, clear favorites from the start of the season, and they showed by sheer dominance today, uh, dominating on both ends of the floor. Lahat ng hugot ni Coach Gold uh, before Basura time really contributed a lot. Uh, we can name them all as boleros, to be honest, if we wanted to. Uh, but unfortunately, ballers, uh, ballers, 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 sorry, ballers. Uh, Masyado ng lasal yung napag-usapan ko eh. So, so boleros ang naisip ko. But to be honest, we could have really named everyone from the UP rotation as a baller today. Lasal uh, just has to match up better in the second game. Uh, I thought they did a good job only in the first quarter matching yung energy and uh, determination ng, ng UP. But UP's depth, depth you really showed nung starting yung second quarter. Any final thoughts, Gab, before we end the episode? Uh, one final thought and one final bolero from me. The Philippines live app and the coverage as a whole. <laughs> Grabe nga. Grabe I thought nga. I was the only one experiencing echoes in the verse. When the game was starting, when the, when the coverage was starting, I'm like, what the hell? But gonna think sound. Then, then when you told me that you were experiencing it too, oh my god. So 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 it's the broadcast. And come on, UAAP, TV5, Signal, Filipinas Life. It's the finals. <laughs> Why is the telecast like this? You should be give, giving us better. And pinaasa nila tayo, Maui. We thought na my YouTube, my free YouTube streaming for this finals. And <laughs> They took it down. Tayo, tayo, <laughs> tayo. So for so for those who don't know, one sports YouTube page put out an an event that uh there was gonna be a live stream of the of game one UP versus DLSU UAP season eighty six. Then we ha- Maui had the link ready for us, and then when the game was starting, you click the link. The page was gone. The video was the gone. The event is gone. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so from paasa, man. I mean, so from grave. Uh, they, siguro nagpaasa lang sila. Okay, makano daw sa. So if you're a casual fan, okay, I'll, you know, I can watch the game on YouTube. We don't have it. Oh, I can't watch it now. Oh man, I have to subscribe to Philippines Live. You give my money to Philippines Live. <laughs> they should really show showcase it in YouTube. I think in one of my friends, Gab, uh, I, I wasn't able to mention to you. One of my friends showed me a screenshot nung, nung mga live free streaming sa, sa Facebook and I think more than 10,000 was watching. Uh, ba? It has to be free access and easy access, hopefully. Sana paramdam to yeah. for what's to come, yung, yung what we saw. Pero what a big letdown yeah. and paasa this was. Same thing, Maui, no? I, I, I do have some uh, acquaintances and friends who ask, Uy, Gab, yung, paano ba yung makanood ng UAP? Uh, habi ko, you either have to download Signal Play or Pilipinas Live. May bayad, oo. Tapos, 
they're kind of turned off. Alam. Ay, but may bayad. Diba? Hindi yung wala bang free TV version. Well, the free TV version is on a, behind the paywall in Signal Play. UAV, barely anyone has cable now. You know, everything is on the internet. Kawawa Just, working uh, class. Diba? You want to win the access. Yeah, diba? I mean, easy to access. Also. It, turns, it turns off casual fans, diba? Unless hardcore supporter ka talaga ng basketball teams ng schools mo, you won't want to pay to subscribe to uh, Pilipinas Live or Signal Play. And kaya nabubuhay yung mga illegal streams, eh. Because the UAP is locked behind the paywall. And I don't think that's the way to go. Again, man. Philippines Live UAP sobrang paasa kayo. Grabe kayo nag naglabas pa kayo ng events page <laughs> nag, nasa sa YouTube page ng One Sports and just to delete it when the game started. What the hell man? What the hell? That's just sobra uh, Grabe grabe kayo, grabe lang. <laughs> anyway, that's it for our ballers and boleros of game 1 of the UAP finals. Again, a 97 to 67 win by the UP Fighting Maroons. Then demolition. one win away. <laughs> yes. Clear demolition. demolition. One down. win away from another UAAP championship. Uh, we'll be covering game two. We'll think of, we'll possibly think of maybe one or one episode before game two. Hopefully, we'll have Sammy here. But thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, don't, don't forget to like, comment. And subscribe and share and as share usual. Share your friends and, and family. And share the, 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 the podcast. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good thank night. You.